Hi, welcome. In today's video, I'll take you through introduction to computers with questions and guided solutions. So, do well to share the link with others so that they can also benefit from this. Okay. So, without wasting much time, let's start. Now, we are going to start with the first part. Okay. So, we'll be taking question on Excel question, like Excel. Okay. So, we shouldn't waste any time at all. Do well to share the link with others so that they can benefit from this. Okay. Okay. So, do that. And let's start now. Question one says, the log function can accept dash argument or arguments. Now, this question is basically asking you that how many arguments can the log function accept? Okay, this is the log function. How many arguments can it accept? Now, things that you put in a bracket are called the arguments. Okay, so I opened my Excel and then I typed in equals log that's l-o-g then i open bracket and you can see that excel is also suggesting to me the values to enter so one argument is number and another argument is base so let's say i want log 5 base 3 then when i type equals and i type log i need to type 5 here okay then i bring comma and i type 3 then i close the bracket when I click enter, it will give me the answer for log 5 base 3. Okay. So, you should know that the log function accepts two arguments. That's the number and the base. Okay. So, it accepts two arguments. Okay. So, the correct answer to question 1 is A. Okay. Two arguments. So, let's proceed to the next question. Question 2 says, what value would display if the formula equals $55.00 question mark plus 5 is entered into a cell? Now, when you enter this thing in a cell, this particular one, equals $55.00 question mark plus 5. When I enter that in my cell, okay, in a particular cell, it's displaying the formula bar here. My formula bar is at the down. When you open yours, your Excel, I think yours will be at the top, okay? Now, when I click enter, as soon as I click enter, this is what displays. It said there's a problem with this formula. So, but in this MCQs, you choose D, okay, error, okay? If it were 55 equals 55 plus 5, the answer would have been 60, okay? So, let's proceed to the next question. Question 3 says, which of the following will be seen in a cell when an Excel user types 20 and then leaves a space and then type 1 slash 2? So let's go to Excel. Now, in a particular cell, I enter 20, okay, then I left a space before entering 1 slash 2. As soon as I click on enter, it remains the same. It returns the same thing. 20 space 1 slash 2 okay so it will remain the same so for that matter the answer to question 3 is d okay to those who are now joining please share the link with others so that you can benefit from this okay so without wasting much time let's proceed question 4 says after typing the new name of a worksheet tab press the dash key to accept the name change now when you enter the name of a new workbook okay as in when you when you type in the new name of a work worksheet okay now you need to press something for it to accept the name change so what is that thing it is the enter key this one okay this is how it looks okay there are some keyboards, depending on the keyboard you are using, what I am, the keyboard that I'm using here, they've not written enter on it. They just draw this arrow on it. Mine, okay. So, you see some keyboards, they only draw arrow, this particular arrow, 
without the without writing the enter but some of you your keyboard they've written both the enter and the arrow and some to the only write enter on it but this particular key you click on it to enter that's a c okay question five the file extension for an excel macro sheet is so these are the file extensions that we have but for this particular question the answer is e okay it's excel macro sheet okay then question six to format time in the default format press now to format time in the default format you are going to use control plus at okay but look at the keyboard this is the control this one here is a control okay and at is here it's on two okay but when you click on this key only i mean this key when you click on it only two comes it is not at that comes isn't it but how do you do to get at on this key since this key is for two and at but when you click on it you get to not at how do you do to get at in reality when you are practicing you click on shift this shift key together with a two to get at so shift and two will give you the at at sign okay so since you know that control plus at is what you want to use then you need to click on control shift and two together so control shift to give you control plus at you get it but for exams you only choose option e control plus at okay but in practice okay depending on the type of keyboard you are using in practice you have to click control plus shift plus two because con shift and two give you the at you get it yeah so let's proceed to the next question question seven says the shortcut keys which moves the active cell to the last cell in the use portion of the worksheet is now look at this i was working in in a particular sheet in a workbook okay now these are the portion this is the portion i'm using in my worksheet this is the used part of my worksheet right so my cell was active at this point my cell was active here now i want to move this cell to the last part of the use portion of my sheet i want to move it there without clicking on the arrows or anything the reason the shortcut is needed is that what if my work were to be more than this let's say it's added down how do i move there easily so you, we have a shortcut key for doing that and that shortcut key is what the question is asking you now when i click on that shortcut key okay it moves the cell straight forward to the last part of my of the portion i'm using you know i'm using this entire portion so my cell was active here at this place as soon as i use that shortcut it moves the active cell directly to the last part of the used portion you get it so the question is basically asking us that which shortcut key is that so it is control plus end e n d when you check the keyboard my end is here depending on your keyboard i don't know where yours is check it you see it okay mine they've written it on it e n d so i click on control this control and plus end i click on the two together when i click on it together it will move my active cell from wherever it is to the last part okay of the used portion of my worksheet okay so the correct answer to question seven is d so let's proceed to the next question question eight says the dash menu system enables you to navigate through excel and access the various excel commands so to answer this question look at this now let me get my pen now look at this this is menu right 
when you click on menu things that display here are this part things that display are this part is different from when you click on insert so currently i'm on insert okay when you click on page layout also things that will display at this part that i've circled will also be different okay but the question is interested in where those things are being displayed how do you call that place so that place is the ribbon okay so we say tabbed ribbon so the correct answer to this question is b the tab ribbon menu system enables you to navigate through excel and access the various excel commands so you can you can navigate and access the various what excel command okay question nine excel allows you to either add or remove commands from the now look at this question look at this this place that i've drawn the red rectangle open your excel and see you see this thing at the top there okay click on it now when you click on it with it you can add new commands and remove the previous commands that were already on your excel from there okay you can add new commands save open new or anything you can add them and remove as well so that's what the question is asking you that excel allows you to either add or remove commands from the from where what's the name of that location that place this place what's its name so the name is the quick access to bar so the answer is b the answer to question nine is what is b quick access to bar okay then let's proceed question 10 says which of the following or which of the formulas below will sum up the values in the range of cells dollar tt1 dollar one to dollar tt dollar 10 in each of the sheets from sheet 1 to sheet 4 and add the sums together resulting in a grand total now now to answer this look at this um going to cell tt will be long for me okay and using data from 1 to 10 okay from 1 to 10 will be long for me a bit i just want to explain something with this okay so let's go to excel now when we go to excel so let's go to excel now in sheet one okay <clears throat> check that down there you see they've written sheet one over there so in sheet one i decided to enter seven in b1 four in b2 and two in b3 then i click on the plus beside the sheet one written at the down check your excel the down there I click on it to open sheet 2. So in sheet 2 also, I enter other values from B1 to B3. Then in sheet 3 also, I enter other values from B1 to B3. And then in sheet 4, I enter different values from B3, B1 to B3 as well. Now, this, I want to solve in relation to the previous question, to the question we are on right now, okay? Now, what I'm interested in is, I want to add all values in this place in sheet one together with the ones in sheet two together with the one in sheet three and sheet four i want to add everything together are you following so to add everything together since they are in the same location in each seat sheet okay because in sheet one you have them from b1 to b3 sheet two b1 to b3 sheet three b1 to b3 and sheet four same place so to add them together this is the formula i use I enter equals sum, then I open bracket and type sheet one, colon sheet four, meaning from sheet one, meaning I'm telling Excel that Excel add those values from sheet one to sheet four. Then I brought exclamation sign, then dollar B one, sorry, B dollar one, colon dollar B dollar three, meaning I'm telling Excel that those values are from B one to B three in each of those sheets from sheet one to sheet four so add the values from b1 to b3 that's what i'm telling excel to do so when i type that and i click enter it gives me the answer for everything so you try it and see add seven plus four plus two 
plus 1 plus 0 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 3. So as we add everything together, we get what? This 32 here. Okay. So we are going to apply that same formula to the question. Okay. So when you look at the question, the question is saying that you have data from TT1 to TT10. Okay. And same thing in sheet 1, sheet, sheet 2, sheet 3, and sheet 4. So how do you add everything together? Okay. So to add everything together, the formula you enter is equals sum, then sheet 1, column sheet 4. Then you bring exclamation, okay? Now after the exclamation, then you bring dollar $TT$1, column $TT$10. So for that matter, the correct answer to question 10 is D, okay? Just as the formula I enter here, sheet 1, column sheet 4, exclamation dollar $B$1, then column dollar b dollar three so you use same thing for this okay so it will add all values from tt1 to tt10 in sheet one to the one in sheet two to the one in sheet three and to the one in sheet four okay and the exclamation is very necessary when you are making sheet reference so be very careful about that so let's proceed to the next question 11 says which of the following characters can be used when making a 3d reference to cells in two or more in two or more worksheets we just use that right now and that's a c exclamation okay when we wanted to make reference to and uh, sheets two three and four okay we added exclamation sign to sheet four when we type sheet four isn't it so the exclamation is used so the correct answer to question 11 is c then question 12 when referring to other sheets in a workbook which of the following will you need in a formula so in the formula when we wanted to refer to other sheets in that particular workbook okay we use cell referencing and we also use our sheet reference we make references to a particular cell that's tt1 and tt10 and we also make reference to some particular sheets that's sheet one sheet two sheet three and sheet four isn't it so we use cell reference and what sheet reference so for that matter the answer to question 12 is b i and i i okay 13 the serial numbering of date has the date dash as the base so the base for serial numbering okay that's question 13 the base for serial numbering is b that is first january 1900 and it's very important to know this okay then question 14 the formula equals or then into brackets not true comma false we return now if you enter this in excel okay excel will give you the answer as false but how do you know if you are writing exams how do you know the answer is false so this is how to do that so look at this now this is all as a function isn't it and inside the bracket for all you have one argument this is an argument one comma then another argument remember things in the bracket are called arguments okay so in a function or you have one argument first comma then you have another argument making two arguments isn't it now false means what false right now what's the meaning of not true you have not into brackets true you open your excel and go to one particular cell and type equal to not then in the brackets type true in it and close everything not true only it will give you false okay not true means what false not true it means false and false also means false so you are saying false or false that's what you are saying this time around since this means false and this also means false then basically you are saying false or false okay and false or false should give you false isn't it false or false it should be false okay so it looks like saying false plus false is false okay so the answer is what d question 15 
What does shift plus space bar do? Now, when you click on shift, this is the shift key. And this is space bar. This long one is the space bar. Now, when you click on shift plus space bar, it will select a row, an entire row. Okay. It will select a row. So, the correct answer to question 15 is C. Select a row. Okay. But if you click on control, this one, plus space bar, for that one, it will select a column. Okay. It will select a column. But if you use shift plus the space bar to select a row, okay, so the correct answer to question 15 is C. To those who are now joining, do well to share the link with others so that they can also benefit from this. It's important, okay. Question 16. Which of the following will enable Excel to accept a number as a text when placed in front of the number? So... It's important to know that when you type a number in, in, in a cell, okay, it will align to the right. But when you type a text, it will align to the left. Okay. But if you want a number which always aligns to the right to align to the left like a text, okay, to, to, as, to, to go as a text, okay, what do you do to make it so? So what to do is to bring what? Apostrophe at the word apostrophe okay at the you place it in front of it before typing the number excel will accept it as a word as a text okay another way of doing that is by entering equal to then you bring double quotes this quote then you enter the number you want to enter and close it then you click enter it will also accept it as text okay but since apostrophe is the only one in the possible answer, so the answer is D, okay? 17. Functions may not be used as arguments to another function. Is this true or false? It says functions may not be used as arguments to another function. Now, initially you saw something like not into brackets, uh, you saw all into bracket not true you know not not the into bracket true is another function on its own and you've placed a function inside another function it's just like saying equals sqrt into bracket abs into bracket negative four it will give you an answer because abs negative four is four and square root of four will give you positive two, isn't it? So for that matter, in a cell, you can place a function in another function. It is possible to place a function in another function or to use a function as an argument of another function. That's what I'm trying to say. So it is possible. So for that matter, the answer to this is false because the question says functions may not. It should rather be functions may be used as arguments to another function that one will be true but this is saying functions may not be used as argument to another function then it's false it can be used okay 18 the maximum number of characters that can be typed in a cell is limited to so the answer is c 255 okay 19 if the value 2 is entered in a cell a1 and the autofill handle is dragged over cells a2 to a4 what values are displayed in cell a2 to a4 so um instead of me typing two here i enter one okay so don't worry about that open your excel and go to cell a1 and then enter two there then you see a plus sign on your destiny on your cell it is white okay don't use that one come down to the side okay bring your cursor down to the left corner the left down corner here okay the right sorry the right where i've circled as soon as you bring your cursor there you see that that white plus sign will change to black okay when it changes to black then left click and drag down to cell a4 
when you left click and drag down to cell A4 and you leave it, okay, as soon as you leave it, you see that cell A2, A3, and A4 will copy the same value in A1. So for that matter, the answer to question 19 is E. Okay, cell A2, A3, and A4 will all take 2, 2, 2 since 2 is in A1. That is if you use the autofill handle, okay. So the correct answer to question 19 is E. Okay. <clears throat> in other questions, or maybe when you are writing exams, the option can be in B or C or anywhere. What matters is to understand this. Okay. So it's 2, 2, 2. Then 20. Which of the following characters cannot be used in a file? Or workbook name. Okay. When you are saving a file name. Which of these characters cannot be used? Or is it can be used? Yeah, it cannot be used. So we can't use this. But you can use an underscore when you are saving a name. I do that a lot. Okay. And then you can't use this as well. You can use this and you can use this. So the ones that can be used are I, 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 V, and V only. So the correct answer to question 20 is D okay then 21 the functions and or and not belongs to what category of functions so we have different different functions okay but these ones and or and not if they belong to the logical function okay they are logical okay they are logical functions it's very important to know that 22. Which function calculates your monthly loan payment? To know the function that calculates your monthly loan payment, please. Monthly loan payment. Okay. It is the PMT. Option C. Okay. It is the PMT that calculates monthly loan payment. The PV is present value. Okay. And PEM means like a uh, number of period. Okay number of periods okay and then the ipmt is like the interest okay where the pmt calculates the monthly loan payment okay then 23 which of the following function key can be used to view a formula in a cell when the cell which contains the formula is the active cell now when the when the cell which contains the formula is the active cell you can double click on it to view the formula also when the cell which contains the formula is the active cell also without clicking anything you can see the formula in the formula bar at the top of your excel okay but this question is specific to the function key that can be used okay so you answer in relation to the question okay so 20 um, so for question 23 the answer is e f2 okay you click on the function key f2 to view the formula in the active cell okay 24 dash displays the name of the program running what displays the name of the program running okay it is the title bar it will display the name of the program you are running so i'm running book one okay so the title bar displays that so the answer is a that's question 24 okay so it is the title bar that displays the name of the program running question 25 which of the following functions can be used to obtain factorial of a given number so remember factorial means let's say you have three factorial three factorial means three times two times one 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's the meaning. And the factorial sign looks like exclamation. Okay, so 3 factorial, you write it as 3, then factorial. You see that. But in Excel, the factorial function is E. Facts, then you open bracket, then you enter that value you want to find its factorial and close the bracket. So, if you wanted to find 3 factorial, then you, you enter fact equals, okay, you bring equal to sign, equals fact, then open bracket and enter 3, 
then you close it in a cell do that and see then you click enter it will give you an answer as six okay yeah and three times two times one is six also right yeah so let's proceed to the next question question 20c says what is the default display format of dates in excel so the default format of dates in excel is months first okay then day second then year third okay so if let's say today's date is um let me say 13th april 2023 then anyhow you put it for the default format excel will put it on this form okay it will bring month first okay so april that's zero four slash then 13 then 1 3 slash 2023 that's how excel will put it okay so that's the default format unless you change it yourself to other type okay so the correct answer to question 26 is a 27 dash is a cell or range address in a formula that excel interprets by virtue of its location an address is also known as what reference okay in a formula that excel interpret by virtue of its location so it's interpreted by its location okay so we say that is a relative reference it's interpreted by virtue of its location okay so the answer is was relative reference 28 which function is used to calculate depreciation rates of return future values and loan payment amounts now we use for mass and trigonometry functions sine cos tan cotangent cosecant and the likes they are under math and trigonometric function okay but to calculate depreciation rate of return future values loan payment amount and the likes we use the financial function for it okay so it's b financial function for the logical function you have not if um a false true and the lies they are under the logical function and okay then for the statistical functions you have the mean medium mode standard deviation um probability and the likes the under statistical function and the text date today now the under text okay so financial is what is depreciation rate of return future values and payment amount loan payment amount okay so they are under financial function so when you look at this this is a logical function so you go to your excel and go click on the formula okay so click on this arrow beside the logical so that you can see more examples of the logical fu functions okay then you click on this is financial okay so when you click on this open your excel and do that you can do that later so click on this arrow you see more examples of financial okay then you see more example of text date and time um when you click more you see more of them okay yeah so question 29 what value will be returned by the expression equals even open bracket 0 0.0000001 okay now for this i decided to enter it in my in one cell in my worksheet okay so when i enter equals even then i enter everything the 0, 0.00 up to the last and then I click enter, it gives me two. Why? What SL do is that it runs the number, the argument, okay? It runs it up to the nearest whole even number, okay? It runs it up to the nearest whole even number because you have even here. So for that matter, the correct answer to this is B, okay? Question 30. Which of the following functions does not require an argument? Which of the following function does not need an argument? Okay. So let's see. When I enter equals 
int then open bracket even excel is telling me directly that i need to enter argument one argument a number okay when i enter concatenate it also requires an argument okay you which text do you want to concatenate okay then power power also requires an argument okay power requires an argument it requires the number and the power so if you want to check let's say five exponent two then when you enter equals power then you open bracket then you enter five comma two then you close it and click enter it will give you the answer for five exponent two and five exponent two is 25 right so it will return 25 as the answer okay now yesterday yesterday is not a function here okay so it can be used let me take my cleaner so you can't use yesterday okay it can be used in this case now if you enter today okay equals today without entering any argument and you close the bracket and click enter it will give you today's date okay if you if you type equals don't just type it raw like that you need to bring the equal to sign anytime you are entering a function you need to bring the equal to sign okay so equals today open bracket and close it without entering any argument then you click enter it will tell you the date as at the time you are doing it the date of that day it will give you the date okay okay it will tell you what the day is okay but if you want to know yesterday's date okay you won't use the expression yes uh, you won't use the function yesterday we do not have that so the function you can use is to type equals today open bracket and close it and bring minus one like this equals today open bracket and close it minus one it will give you yesterday's date okay so but for this particular question the answer to this is e it is today that doesn't take argument okay so the correct answer to question 30 is e okay then 31 which of these is true to select multiple sheets which are adjacent select the first sheet and now to answer question 31 now look at something this is the shift key right and this is the control key you know that now you see if you want to select sheets you know in excel when you look at your spreadsheet okay your sheet you see that you have sheet one you can add more sheets sheet two sheet three sheet four so do that click on the plus at the front of the sheets in your excel okay look at the bottom you see the sheet they've written sheet one and there's a plus at the front of it so click on it to add more sheets extra sheets so open like four sheets okay now the question is asking you that which of these is true to select multiple sheets which are adjacent select the first sheet and now if you want to select multiple sheets that are adjacent to each other if you select the first sheet what do you do next okay now you see that when you hold on the control control button and you go and click on the last sheet okay if you hold on the control button and click on the on the last sheet it will select only let's say you have sheet one sheet two sheet three and sheet four and you click on and you're on sheet one you click on control before you click on sheet four it will only select um sheet one and sheet four only okay to select sheet one and sheet four only it will skip two and three but if you're on sheet one and you click on this shift key okay before going to click on sheet four it will select everything from one to four all the things that are within like within four that all the things all the sheets that come before four it will select everything together okay but if you're on sheet one and you go and click on sheet three it only select one two up to three it won't select everything it only select those adjacent to it okay so the correct answer to question 31 is b you hold down the shift button 
and select the last sheet. This is true. Okay. Now, let's proceed to question 31, 32. Sorry. 32 says, A dash may be defined as any data that does not place itself in a cell, but rather the result that it generates. So the correct answer to this is C, formula. Formula doesn't place itself in a what? In a cell, but rather the result it generates. Okay. So the correct answer to question 32 is C. Okay. That's formula. 33. What are the shortcut keys for entering a current time in a cell? So to enter the current time in a cell, use control plus column. Okay, that's the current time. But for current date is control plus semicolon. But if you take note, you realize that colon and semicolon are on the same key, isn't it? And when you click on that key, it is semicolon that comes, not colon. And you know, to get colon, if you want to practice it on your keyboard, okay, to get colon, you know, you need to click on shift and, the, and where the semicolon is to get colon. So if you are practicing in person, you are supposed to click Control plus Shift plus where they've written the semicolon to get Control plus colon. Okay, but for examination, it is just Control plus colon. Okay, then thirty-four. If the following formula is typed into cell C fifteen, then what result will it return? Assuming cell twelve contains the value. 10.2 now this is the form this is the function entered okay so assuming it contains 10.2 cell c12 contains 10.2 what will be the answer what will excel return so look at this now in cell c12 okay i enter 10.2 in cell c12 and then when I enter uh, 10.2 in cell C10, then I came to cell C15 and then I enter this formula. Okay. When I enter the formula and I click enter, it gives me 11 as the answer. Okay. How did they get that 11? So let's see how to do that. Now, here, what you are saying is that, look at the formula I enter. What you are saying is that if cell C12, okay, if cell C12 is less than ABS of negative 24, you know, ABS negative 24 will give you positive 24. So you are saying if 10.2, which is cell C12, happens to be less than 24, if that is true, okay, if it is true, then Excel should return an odd number, okay, Excel should return. It should run C12 to the nearest odd number, upward, upward to the nearest odd number. If it is true that cell C12 is less than absolute value of 24, but if it is not true, then it should return an even number. And that even number should run, they should run 2.4 upward to the nearest even number. Okay. So when we look at this, is it true that cell C12 is less than absolute value of negative 24? Is that true? Absolute value of negative 24 is what? Positive 24. And we know that 10.2 is less than positive 24. So it is true. So since it is true, Excel return a, an odd number for C12. C12 is 10.2. It will run C12, which is 10.2, upward to the nearest odd number. And which odd number is that? It's 11. So the answer is A. Okay, 11. So that's the answer to this. So 35. If cell F4 contains the formula equals sum B4 column D4 times $D4, and the formula is copied to cell F5, Will, it will obtain now you you have this formula in f4 and use the autofill to copy the formula to f5 since you are moving from f4 to f5 then 
B4 will also change to B5. D4 will change to D5. But this D4 here will not change. The reason it won't change is that you have dollar in front of your D and dollar in front of your 4. So it won't change. It will remain. So the correct answer to question 35 is A. Okay. The D, uh, dollar D, dollar 4 will remain the same. Only B4 and D4 will change to B5 and D5 respectively. Okay. The option B is wrong. It brought dollar D4 before dollar and 4 again. Okay, that is wrong. And because of the absolute dollar dollar, it can change to D5. So this is also wrong. This is also wrong. When you look at this also, it brings double dollar before the D, then dollar 4 is also wrong. So the correct answer is A. Okay. Then question 36. The function trim. What do the function trim like? What's what's what is it for the function? So when you enter equals trim in bracket open bracket close and you click enter what you do what it does is that it removes spaces from the words from the text okay so the correct answer to question 36 is e okay then 37 if cell a1 equals 15 b1 equals 16 and e1 equals 25 then not all a greater a1 greater than b1 comma e1 greater than 10 will return now to know what this will return this is how to do it now you know that a1 is what 15 isn't it a1 is 15 and b1 is what 16 and e1 is what 25 now this is a function which not is a function on its own and within that function not you have another function again or so let's work the function inside first before we come to the outside one do you get it so let's work the all first now to work it now look at this a1 greater than b1 is that true when you look at a1 greater than b1 as this part alone a1 greater than b1 is it true or false it is false a1 is not greater than b1 b1 rather is greater than a1 so this is saying a1 is greater than b1 so it's false okay now let's see this also e1 greater than 10 is it true or false this is true okay e1 is truly greater than 10 because e1 is 25 isn't it now Anytime you are working a logical function like this and you have all, all into bracket, false, comma, true, it should return true. The answer should be true. Or false, false or true should give you true. Okay. So if all false, comma, true will give you true, then it means now the whole of this, all false, comma, true is now true. Okay. So now let's come out of the bracket. Now, what will not true give you? Not true. What will it give you? Not true means what? False, isn't it? So for that matter, the correct answer to question 37 is D, false. I hope that's, that's clear, right? So let's see question 38. 38 says, all the settings needed in order to print in Excel are usually found under the... Now, to print in Excel, look at this. When you click on the page layout, okay, you have draw, insert. When you click on page layout, look at this place. You see some arrow here, okay, downward arrow. Click on it, you see page setup. So, in the page setup, you can see a lot of things that you can use to do your settings, okay, portrait, landscape, adjust to normal size which size do you want okay paper size print quality and the likes so that's what the question is asking you that all the settings needed in order to print in excel are usually found under there so these are the settings okay these are the settings needed to print okay where are they found they are found under the word page setup so the correct answer to question 38 is page setup menu okay this this is it page setup menu okay 
So they are found under the page setup menu. So let's proceed to 39. An underlining value that does mathematical calculations on numeric values in a worksheet is so the correct answer is a formula okay the formula does mathematical calculations on numeric values in a worksheet okay 40 the shortcut key shift plus control plus dollar sign can be used for the dash number format it can be used for currency number format okay we use it for what currency number format so the correct answer is what is b okay it's used for currency number format then 41 on the bottom right corner of the spreadsheet includes the following except now let me i took a screenshot of the bottom left uh, uh bottom right corner of my spreadsheet okay so you to open your excel when you open look at the bottom right corner okay you see this thing there you see something like this there have you seen that now the first one this one is called the normal okay it's normal and then this second one is page layout okay is page what layout and the third one is page break preview page break preview okay and this one is called zoom so you can zoom in and zoom out okay when you click the minus it reduces it plus it increases so that's the zoom so when you look at the possible answers page layout is part of the bottom right corner zoom is part normal is part page break preview is also part this is the only one which is not part so this is the answer except so it's except b okay outlook preview so the answer is what b 42 an excel workbook is a collection of an excel workbook is a collection of what worksheets and what and charts okay it's a collection of what worksheets and charts okay 43 what is common to the excel functions today now and pi what is common to them okay now the first one says they belong to the same category of function is that true no i don't think it's true today and now are text and pi is mathematical or mathematical and trigonometric right so they do not belong to the same category okay without wasting much time the answer is what is d okay they require no argument when you when you go to excel enter one particular cell in enter equals today then you click enter it will give you an answer without entering any argument if you also click equals then you type now open bracket and close and click enter it also give you an answer without entering any argument if you also enter pi equals pi then close bracket open and close bracket it also give you answer without any argument so they require no arguments okay so the correct answer to question 43 is d 44 how do you select an entire column to select an entire column okay if you want to select an entire column you click the column heading letter there is it you see that this is a column column a right column b column c d e f going now if you want to select the entire column if you click on like this place c this area when you click on it it will select the entire column you try that and see click on this place like this b it will select that entire column so that's what the question is asking you that if you want to select an entire column what do you do so you click on the column heading letter the heading letter for this column is c so when i click on it it selects the entire column the heading column for uh, heading letter for this column is d so when i click on it it selects it will select the entire column okay so the answer is what d 45 what do you call the point where a row and column meet so it is a cell look at it this is a column and this is a row so where they meet is a what is a cell okay 46 under which page setup tab do you set the print area so look at this 
I show you this initially, right? When you go to page layout, then you click on this arrow down here. You have the page setup menu, isn't it? So this is the page setup menu, isn't it? Now, under the page setup menu, you have page, you have margin, you have head and footer, you have sheets. Now, click on the sheet. When you click on the sheet, it will display these things, okay? When you were on page, the things that were displayed are different from when you click on sheets. Have you seen that? So on sheets, you have print area, print title, and likes. And the question is asking you that, under which page setup tab do you set the print area? The print area. So as you can see, it is under the sheet tab that we set the print area they are talking about. Okay, so the answer is what? Sheet tab A. I hope that's clear. So let's proceed to the next question. 47. Which of the following is a circular address if it's entered in VII23? Address is also known as reference, okay, circular reference. So the answer to this is D. The reason is you are entering this whole formula, okay, you are entering this whole thing in cell VII23 and then you are making reference to that same cell again within your formula or function okay you are entering the whole thing in this particular cell VII23 and you are making a reference to that same cell again within your formula or function then that is circular address okay so for that matter the correct answer to question 47 is d okay then 48 when you start excel the program opens with a dash titled book one so this is it when you start excel okay when you check your uh, your desktop or you type excel and you open it instantly this thing will display first, isn't it? Now, this particular one here, this one, is called what? Blank workbook. So when you click on it, it will be titled book one. Okay, it will be titled book one. So it's called blank workbook. So the correct answer to question 48 is C, blank workbook. So this is it. Okay, so the written book one at the top here. Okay. 49. Valid date entries are aligned to the. Remember, when you enter a valid date like this, 4th, uh, 13th April 2023. Okay. When I enter this, 4 slash 13 slash 2023, and I click enter, it aligns it to the what? To the right. Okay. It's been aligned to the right. So, validate entries are aligned to the word, to the right. So, the correct answer is B. Okay. Question 50. Which cell referencing can establish a permanent link to a row? So, the correct answer to this is B. Absolute reference. Okay. An absolute reference is a type of cell reference in Excel that remains constant. Okay regardless of where the formula is copied or moved to so we usually bring the dollar sign before the letter and a dollar sign before the number for absolute reference so you can have dollar a dollar two you see that so we call that absolute reference so it establishes a permanent link to a row okay so it is absolute reference so part one ends here We'll continue with part 2 in 30 minutes time. So check the description area below for links to other videos, okay? You can also check out our videos on algebra, statistics and probability, calculus, business maths, financial maths, discrete maths, and other related courses. Also, click on the notification button so that you can get notified when I'm about to start the second part. Thank you.